Hi, welcome back to Dow of Twang. So, a little part two on this one. Um, if you didn't see part one, probably do them in either order. Um, it's the same backing track and uh, the same, a uh, lot of E minor pentatonic. And I put a, a diagram up on that one a couple days ago of this um, E minor pentatonic uh, uh, pattern that spans the, the neck from open to the 12th fret. <laughs> Okay, that's a good one to know. So I'm um, not going to spend a lot of time on that one today. I'll put that diagram over the on a slide over the um, practice loop and a link to it in the description. Um, today we're going to add another little piece to this and make it, this is taking on more of an arrangement. Okay, so the other day we were kind of, you know, really straight out improvising with it, getting our ear used to that scale, and, and maybe, you know, for some of you, learning kind of a new way of moving around with that uh, E minor pentatonic. And um, today we're going to put a couple little um, different pieces into this routine. But as you can see, it was very concise. It was almost more like a song arrangement in that demo today, right? It wasn't as free form. It was all kind of figured out, right? So I'm going to be able to show you, you know, precisely what was going on there. Now the um, progression um, is... And that's that E7 um, sharp 9 chord, right? And then just uh, A, G. Now, I noticed when I was playing with this, and so this happens a lot with practice loops, is sometimes it'll get to, almost got to feeling like it started on these two chords and then, you know, more like. And that's just kind of a, a, a cool thing about, you know, music is that it's your, your our brains just kind of like, you know, I jumped on there today and I started doing this and then I noticed like, hey, I'm playing this like it's a, <laughs> you know, a, a kind of a reversal of the, my phrasing was kind of going along with it that way. So I don't want to confuse it with that. I just thought I'd mention that though, because when stuff like that happens, just go with it. You know, it's like, hey, you know, maybe that's how you're, it speaks to you in a different way that way, or it feels more natural or something, you know, um, just kind of a, a cool uh, uh, aspect of, especially when you're using something that's repetitive, like a groove or a loop like that, right? So I'm going to show you these licks. Now here's that intro stuff kind of just slowed down to begin with. Um, in between, I'm always kind of coming back to this uh, E7 uh, sharp 9 chord, right, in this routine. So... Now for the A, I'm going. So now that's right up the A major pentatonic. So we got. Okay. And get that under your fingers. And then when it goes to the G, we're going to play the same lick, but starting on G that we did for the A. And here's kind of a, a, an interesting aspect of this. If we go... So it's... Now, what's interesting about this is that that G major pentatonic is the same notes as our E minor pentatonic, right? That was our main pattern. OK, 
Okay. So, you know, don't need to kind of over explain that, but that's a good example of how a lot of these things are interrelated and why things go together and sound good in a key and so forth. Um, so we got And the next thing in that intro was All right, now use your ear along with your eyes. Here's the notes for the first one. And I'm sliding up, but I'll just... Right? There's no tab. Just take a look at the area that I'm in. I'm on the G and the high E string. On the ninth fret there. And I'm using these two middle fingers, kind of stacked. And then if that's the one for A, two doors down, it's going to work for G. See, so everything is, is kind of a copy and paste right there. That's really typical of a lot of, you know, pentatonic blues licks. Now, um, there's one more piece that I did in there, and then I'm going to show you how to kind of put together this little arrangement and add a little bit of uh, space for your own improvisation as well. So here's what we got so far. Okay, so it's very similar in timing, it's identical in timing to the one up here. But the notes this time are part of an A and B triad. Or uh, G, sorry, going down to G. That's part of an A, see? Some of you caged players, right there, right? And then two doors down. And the picking's just back and forth on each one of those. I like to use my kind of hook finger, my chicken finger there for that. But you could pick it too, you could go. You can tell that's not as natural for me. I'd, 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 without thinking, I would just automatically use uh, my extra finger there. But that's not a, a necessity. You might get a neater effect, a heavier rock effect sometimes by just using the pick. Okay, so here's our routine up until now. I'll keep this still at the lower tempo. Then we'll put the track on and kind of take a look at it. Oh, one thing I did want to mention was on the downbeat, I'm just hitting the open uh, bottom low E string each time, right? And that kind of fits into these licks, too. I don't know if I mentioned that before, but... Um, that'll kind of help you keep, you know. Okay, that's pretty much it, note for note. Well, that's a good little routine. And you can do that off to the side. You could set, 
set up your own loop at a different speed or something. But you could also just, you know, kind of play that any which way you want, take as much time as you want in between things to work it out, right? And then, um, you know, don't worry if you don't even get up to the speed of the loop, you know, for a while or ever, you know, it's still useful information. You're going to be able to apply this, especially this where you're using those um, little uh, major pentatonic runs over those major chords and then going back to that minor. That's just going to work in a whole bunch of theoretical uh, scenarios for you. So if it doesn't come out just like you, you want it or like it does in the demo, don't worry. But you, you give yourself credit for all the stuff that you're gaining from that no matter how you apply it. For yourself. Um, the last little thing here is more of a kind of just a suggestion or kind of a, 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 a you know guiding um, ideas for you is to you know I'm doing all the stuff with the, over the E I'm holding on to that chord for this routine that kind of sounds cool as a, as a an arrangement but you know, you can start to um, branch out and do a little bit of improvisation with that in between, especially over the E, and then just kind of let yourself go, like we always say. I'm gonna do a little bit of a uh, demonstration of, of that process, and then get you to the practice loop. Let me know how it goes. See you next time.